By the end of this video, you'll be able to use JWTs in your own React project and take your application to a whole new world. Ready for liftoff? The shuttle's gonna take off soon. Worried you're not ready? It's okay. I'm Becky, a software engineer at Space Tech, and your lead astronaut who's gonna explore this React galaxy with you. JWT literally stands for JSON Web Token. Essentially, it transfers secure details in a compact and self-contained way in a JSON format. If it's your first time here in JSON, no worries. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very popular and current standard way of transferring information around the web. And likewise, JWTs are common and a powerful tool, as they're mainly used for authorization and info exchange. The token can be separated into three different parts. Header, payload, and signature. We'll touch base on a little bit on all of them later to access our site. I'll share my screen shortly here, but before that, let's do a quick knowledge check. After being decrypted and de or decoded, what is the format of the data inside the JWT? Is it in JavaScript, string, arrays, or JSON? If you guessed JSON, you're right. Any of the other ones? Nice try. All right, jumping straight into the code. On my left-hand side, you'll see my VS code and the right-hand side, my application. Now, just so you guys know, I do have a backend server that serves me a JWT. This is built on Express and Node.js. If you guys are interested, please let me know in the comments down below. So a couple of things to note here on the project itself. I do have a use context, and I also have a couple of functions that have been predefined along with the component, the rest of the component itself. When the component begins to render, it actually looks for a couple of things. One, it looks to first to see if my user has a first name. If the first name is empty, it'll actually render the login form. But if the user has logged in and there is a first name, it will welcome me back using my name. That's what our goal is for today, to welcome me back using my name. So with a form itself, it has two predefined functions that let's go here. You can see they're pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The on change does what it sounds like, that on change of the text input, it'll update my state with the email and password information. If this is your first time seeing this kind of syntax, it simply is a dynamic way of setting the key. And then the value on the right hand side is the actual value of the key. So this saves me a line or two of code instead of doing an if else statement if I'm just trying to set an object or a dynamic key for an object. Now, my second function here, my on submit, you'll see that I'm using async and await. So you know I'm definitely using promises for my API. Now, my API, because it is a backend project that I've built myself, I know how it looks like. And so I've actually made a wrapper class around it. So I can just do API.login. Then I send in the login information that I have based on my user data. And then I actually use a third predefined function called change user with the data received from my API. Now, a couple things. Change user and user come from another React hook called use context. And in this case, if you guys are interested, feel please feel free to look at my other video for use context. In a nutshell, People use prop drilling to send down user information or data to children components. Now, React developers created another way of doing this to actually send down information without actually having to do prop drilling. And that's through the use of use context. More information in that other video I mentioned, so feel free to give it a check out. All right, so that being said and done, let's actually look at what my change user function looks like. My change user does only one thing and it actually updates my user, my registered user information. So my registered user information has three parts. And that is being set to my user. My user has three parts, my first name, email, and token. Now when I actually retrieve the token or retrieve my user, I retrieve all three sections. But one of the more curious functions I have is this is token valid. 
if you if you guys are just first starting off in the programming world, the keyword is usually indicates that the result of the function or the variable is what we call a boolean, so a true false result. In this case, the is token valid simply means that I will get a true or false based on if my token is valid or not. I've seen is token valid or the other format I've seen is has something changed or has context has user something like that. So once we start going into this function here, you'll see that if my user token does not exist, I'll actually return false. And if it does have a token, I'll decode my token and check to see if it has expired or not. If it has expired, I'll return false because that means my token is no longer good. I should actually have my user log in again. But if I do have a token and the valid, it has a valid expiration date, I'll return true and my user is um, good to go. Now, if you guys want to learn again more about the use context, feel free to look it up or give my video another view. So going back to my actual uh, component here, once I've logged in, I should be able to see my first name on the front of my page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to use a fake email and password here. And voila, I have actually logged in. So again, going back to my user context, I do use another library here called JWT slash decode. Now what this one does, it allows me to read any well-formatted JWT with the information given. Now, if I want to verify or change or call on APIs using this token that I retrieved from the backend, the backend is the one that will validate and sign my JWT tokens. So anytime I make another API call to my backend, I should include this token so that it knows I have the right permissions, it knows who I am, and that becomes my badge. Now, a couple things about JWT is that, one, there's usually an ongoing debate of where to securely store your token. Some people store it in local storage, which has the least security and the least protection from other sites. What happens is that other sites can actually go into your application or where your tokens are stored and retrieve them and then actually use them. This is what we call um, cross-site scripting. You may have heard of it. It's something that a lot of developers have to keep an eye out for. And now a way to mitigate this or make sure that your token isn't taken is to use an HTTP cookie. So if you heard cookies, nom, 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 they're usually pretty yummy. But in this case, cookies can actually help protect your token. Now you can send that token back so long as your backend can actually accept and read your token from the cookie. That being said, a lot of architecture, a lot of uh, design on security depends on how this token is secured and validated from the backend. So. Keep that in mind as you guys work with JWTs and make your own application out of them. So going back to my project here, when I retrieve the data, since I am using async and await, I means I'm awaiting a promise from my login. This is kind of key when you're logging into or for any other API. For JWTs, you want to make sure that your API retrieves that token and then returns back that successful code. For me, all of it, all it does is just a change of state on the component itself. All right. Okay, that probably felt like a lot of information on how to use JWTs in a React project. If you guys wanna know more about JWTs or other concepts used in the project today, feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you guys are interested in. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe on this video here. And until our next exploration in React, this has been Becky. Bye.